The first speaker is sitting way over there. His name is Kurt Hartzler. Uh, Dr. Kurt Hartzler became superintendent of Union Public Schools in 2013. Dr. Hartzler is a passionate champion for all students and is firmly committed to ensuring that Union provides a high quality, safe, engaging, and supporting, supportive learning environment. Would you please welcome Dr. Kurt Hartzler. Well, good afternoon. Um, it is so great to see so many people here today. I was really not expecting that. I oftentimes get asked to go and speak to uh, different events and organizations, and uh, not, we don't usually have this many people. So on a Sunday afternoon, and the fact that you're preparing for you know what I can tell you all 16,000s of our students at Union Public Schools are thinking about today, and that's the weather. That's Trust me, <laughs> believe it or not, I have a late in life blessing. I have two older kids who are, who are out of the house, but I have a late in life blessing that's 14, or actually 15. And already this morning, she told me when I got home all ago from the office, said, Dad, I'm already getting texts from my friends wanting to know if we're going to have school next week or not. <laughs> you know, really? Seriously. Well, I, I guess that's what they think about as, as a teenager for sure. So um, I thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, be a part of this uh, crucial dialogue um, and uh, consider it an honor to be here with you today. And I also would like to congratulate uh, OCCJ on 30 plus years of bringing uh, obviously various faiths and organizations together to talk about, you know, sometimes tough issues and how we create a better place for us all to live. I also applaud OCCJ's courage and wisdom in creating a platform in order for us to engage in conversations, obviously, again, that are sometimes difficult about race, ethnicity, religion, and culture. And of course, thank you to Dr. Bill Kroll and Boston Avenue United Methodist Church for hosting this event. Um, the question I guess we are to grapple with today, and I, and I know I have about 15 minutes, so I told Dr. Kroll if I get a little carried away, because he is exactly right, I am passionate about kids, and I'm passionate about public education, and I hope you are too. Even though they represent about 20% of our population, they represent 100% of our future. And I can tell you that as an educator of almost 30 years, this is my 29th year in education, public education, um, I, not, I, I want nothing more than for them to be well prepared to take on our jobs for the future and also to act well, if you will, in the society that we live in. I can tell you when you've been in the business 29 years, you end up uh, investing in a lot of lives and in, in so many ways, I know the older you get, I remember hearing older people tell me, it's like life is like a circle of life and that's so true. I've got to tell you just a quick story about that. That after 29 years of, of public education, I almost have completed that circle of life personally for me in terms of my own kind of health experiences and, and so forth. Uh, I experienced that early on when my wife and I were having our first child at St. Francis Hospital and we were in the delivery room and my wife was in an emergency C-section and all of a sudden at the end of the table was one of her former students and she said, Mrs. Hartzler, it's me. <laughs> well, I know we did a good job educating that young man in terms of the requisite skills and knowledge necessary to be a doctor, but we probably didn't quite do a very good job of preparing him when he should say, hello, it's me <laughs> or not. The other thing I think about, too, is uh, my vet, uh, gosh, a former student of mine. Uh, my mom's heart uh, surgeon is also a former student of, of mine as well. And I think about the investment that we make in our young people's lives, and it is so vitally important that we continue to provide a very good education for them, but not just in the area. Of, of obviously the basic subject areas. I mean, that's important, yes, but I think what's also equally important is the fact that we're educating them about the importance of values, civility, tolerance, and ethics and values. And I, I, I think about the mission of, of not only Union Public Schools, but also our public schools in general. It's a mission that perhaps too often we forget about because as most of you know, you're well-informed, well-educated people here. We have to spend a lot of time on testing and testing and testing and testing. And learning is such a dynamic process. It's so much more than just simply about 
understanding facts and learning knowledge. It really needs to be about making sure that we're producing well-rounded young people, capable of understanding the importance of living with, obviously, um, our deepest differences, whether it be in terms of our religions and our ideologies and, and even living among differences, socioeconomically speaking. And so what I would like to do today, and, and again, the short time that I have uh, with you all, is just to um, provide you a little bit of context about what's happening uh, maybe in public education through kind of the lens, if you will, of Union Public Schools. I said this before recently at, a, at an event at Impact Tulsa that I was asked to speak at in the fall. You know, even though I'm superintendent of Union Public Schools, I care immensely about Tulsa Public Schools and really all of the 170,000 students that make up and reside in Tulsa County because their future will affect us all, and, and I, I truly mean that. Um, let me just kind of first of all tell you this. Um, as I was thinking about writing some comments in regards to this, I'm thinking my assignment was to share with you in a roughly 15 minute time frame of what we are doing in public education and again at Union Public Schools to create optimal learning environments um, where people learn to live among our deep, di deepest differences in terms of faith, cultures, and races, and so forth, and socioeconomic status. And let me first of all say that there's no way this can be done in 15 minutes. It's not. No way. Um, consequently, there are no easy answers or quick results when it comes to this issue. So it takes all of us working together in events like this and being willing to give of ourselves and give of our time to come together and to talk about, you know, what, what do we do here? How do we solve these problems? I think it truly takes a community to educate a child. We all would agree with that. I would also say, too, that if our educational institutions are not perceived as civic obligations, by all, then they will surely fall short in their attempts towards academic excellence and fostering an educated and responsible citizenry. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Union Public Schools and what we've been doing in terms of trying to do our best to optimize that learning experience. We are a district, if you haven't been kind of paying attention to us in a while, um, we have dramatically changed over the last decade. We now have almost 16,000 students. We are a minority majority district and I'm smiling when I say that because we are more colorful than we've ever been before and we think that is absolutely beautiful. I've said this when my two older boys completed their education experience at Union. If someone were to give me a million dollars, I wouldn't accept it in, in for the experience that they had in a public school at Union. And that would be true for me of a lot of schools within Tulsa County. I think we provide a great learning and educational experience for our kids. You've probably heard some of my comments before that in Oklahoma, we really don't have an education problem. We have a poverty problem. One in four of our kids in Oklahoma live in poverty and two-thirds qualify for something called free and reduced lunch. That is, a, that is a reflection of what Union Public Schools is all about. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, we're not a wealthy district. We are blessed with a tremendous bonding capacity and for those of you who voted last week, I thank you personally for your yes vote because for the last two years we have hit record percentages in terms of um, our margin of, of uh, approval and I think that is a wonderful testament to to what our teachers are doing and to what our board of education is obviously focused on and also to our students. Um, but I also want to tell you a little bit more about what we have done in Union Public Schools that four years ago we um, grappled with a very serious question and that was that even though we're changing demographically and we're not as wealthy as we once were, trust me I know, I've seen it, I've, I've been in the district before 29 years ago when I, I noticed how affluent we were and then all of a sudden we've changed you know it just seems like every decade we get we get uh, not as affluent as we used to be and that's okay but one of the things that we've done is as an institution is that we've said that um, four years ago we are going to create this audacious goal that 100 percent of our kids will graduate high school and be college and career ready and for those of you who know me I'm a pretty competitive individual in a lot of ways. I hear one of our former teachers laughing because she knows, Judy Crowell knows that to be true. Judy Rowell knows that to be true. 
Um, and I remember standing before a stage in front of our 2,000 employees, and I said, you know what? That seems like really an improbable goal, something that's impossible, an insurmountable goal. But if you really think about the fact, we live in one of the most giving communities in the nation, and I can say that, and you all, I think, would attest to that. I think we also live in a great city and, and a great county who care immensely about education and care immensely about our students and our future. And I think we live in an awesome state as well. I migrated here 30 years ago from Missouri, and my wife and I, I'll never forget, said, let's give Tulsa three years. We had to choose between the weird city of Austin, Texas, and Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> and I can tell you, we found the place where we were meant to be. Three kids later, this is home. We love it here. Um, but I remember telling our faculty and our staff, we have got to get serious about the education of our youth. So therefore, we're going to graduate 100% of our kids, college and or career ready. I stand before you today, after four years, I wish I could say that all 100% of them have graduated and they have not. But what I think is absolutely remarkable is that when we cast that vision for our, our faculty, it changed what we did and it changed who we are. I stand before you today telling you this, that in the class of 2012, out of roughly 1,100 students, we only have about one or two students that have not procured a diploma. The same is true out of the class of 2013. And in the class of 2014, the most recent class, we have about seven that have not procured a diploma for high school graduation. And here's the kicker in all this. You might think, well, ooh, what happens to those 12 kids that represent 3,400 students that didn't get a diploma. Let me tell you what happens to them. They continue to be on our radar and we're going to harass them until they are sick and tired of hearing from us. And they do sometimes say, how did you get my number? <laughs> I can tell you some funny stories related to that. We had a PTA parent one time two years into this process who came up to me after a PTA meeting and said, Dr. Hartzler, I want to offer you something. She said, my husband is a private investigator and I can tell you, he can assure you, he can assure you we'll find out where these kids are. And I'm thinking, that's going a little bit too far. Maybe we shouldn't do that. But it is a belief that I think we have to continue to, to believe in. We can never give up on our kids. And as I said before, we're more colorful as a district. Socioeconomically, we're not near as wealthy as we used to be. But we also believe that a student's demographic should never, and I'll say this again, a student's demographics should never determine his or her destiny in life, period. I think besides believing in the potential of our students, I think there are a number of programs in Union that we've incorporated in my tenure that I have to say um, have assisted us and, and helped us um, with this belief that we can hit this 100% graduation college and career ready. And by the way, I, I'm a very transparent person as well, and I will tell you that in Tulsa County, we've got a lot of work to do. And we're, gonna, we've all, we're working together. We have a very close-knit group of superintendents, we all, which is very unusual throughout the nation. We all like each other in Tulsa County, all 14 schools that make up the, the districts in Tulsa County. Our graduation rate is not that good in Tulsa County. We have about a 71% collectively speaking all schools graduation rate. That's unacceptable. But I will tell you, we have a plan in place. And when you hear of a program called Impact Tulsa that's uh, being led by our former mayor, Kathy Taylor, along with our superintendents and a lot of wonderful giving philanthropists, we're going to get, I'm convinced, we better, I hope in my lifetime, get to that 100%. We have to. It is a very important, vitally important accomplishments that our students need to, uh, need to meet and make if we are and we truly care about the future of, of Tulsa. Well, one of the programs I want to talk briefly about speaks to obviously this issue of diversity. Um, obviously, as you know, uh, Union is not only obviously very diverse, we have over 55 different languages spoken in Union. It's a lot. Um, we have a tremendously growing Hispanic population, and again, um, we welcome that. I think that's great. But what we have to do in terms of with those differences and with the different languages, we have to think differently about how we serve our, serve our students and our families, and I think we've been doing that. Um, 
We no longer leave graduation or we no, we no longer leave school attendance um, or meeting you know, your requirements for classes up for chance. We get very intentional about it. So if you're not in school a couple days, there's going to be a knock at your door from someone saying, where are you at? What are you doing? What's happened to you? And the same thing is true with our kids. When you, when you have changed so dramatically as we have in union, you have to, to be mindful of the fact that, wow, we have a lot of different ideologies, a lot of different religions, a lot of different beliefs, and that's great. But you've got to be mindful and you've got to be sensitive to that. And so we have a character counts program that we implemented actually under my predecessor, Dr. Kathy Burden. Uh, it's been in existence since about 1995, and I can tell you it's done amazing things because there are six pillars that our students live by and that we live by at Union, their values and their ethics, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, citizenship, and caring. And perhaps one of the biggest traits that we focus on a lot has to do with caring. Because we've changed and all, not all of our students are, are well suited for the educational journey that we we uh, asked them to be a part of. The personalization and caring have been key to getting us close to this 100% graduation college and career ready. Personalization is absolutely key. Let me uh, kind of close by uh, with this comment because I know I'm running out of time here. That I believe public education or public schools are the lifeblood of our democracy. They're places where people of many faiths, cultures, and races learn to live with even our deep, deepest differences. And I hope you know that public schools belong to all citizens. They must model the democratic process and constitutional principles. I think in many ways, schools are the marketplace of ideas, and trust me, our kids sometimes remind us that they are. I could tell you some amazing stories, some good and some not so good, in terms of sometimes the decisions that our kids make but we can't give up on them. The day we give up on them is the day we fail them. And I like to say to kids too that failure is not a person. Failure is an event. And sometimes they need to just hear that in their lives because too often they've been told that you're failing, you're failing, you're failing, you're a failure. And that is absolutely not true. As we become more diverse, obviously also not as a school, but as a society, I think civility and moral values will become increasingly important for our success. And um, let me close with a couple statements here in terms of the value of what public education is about. You know, public education, it's, in, it's been said before, is what serves the public. And I agree with that, but I think equally important is the fact that it creates the public. Think about that just a second. Public education is really what creates the public. So we've got to do more, not only in, in, in our state in terms of investing in the lives of these students, um, we've got to make sure that we're investing more in terms of making sure they understand that it's okay to be different. There's one other pillar I'd probably add to these six pillars that I mentioned before, and that's something called tolerance. I read this morning in a Tulsa World, and perhaps many of you did too. You know, Mike Jones said it best today, if you read the opinion piece of the Tulsa World. He said it best. And I read it, and I said, my goodness, this was somewhat providential for me to read this today as I was sitting having my bagel and my cup of coffee. He said that being tolerant is not being weak. It is being American. So I close you with that, and I, I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today about uh, our public education system. Folks, let me tell you, make no mistake, mistake about it. We are doing great and mighty things in public education, and we're set to do even great and mightier things. Thank you so much. Thank you.